Good morning. It's a joy to uh, be bringing you a few words as we celebrate this uh, Pentecost holiday. And um, I first want to start with a few words about where we are as a church. I look forward to the day I get to lead worship and just lead worship and not have to do these uh, sort of briefings, but uh, that's, these are the days that we live in. Uh, I continue to see case studies that make it clear that the greatest risk of infection is through aerosol transmission, the moisture from the, the air that we breathe out, and I can, I'm seeing uh, data around um, the, the transmission of virus by coughing and like drops getting on something and that that sort of then you touch that something and then touch your face like you can still get the disease that way but that is a a, a far less common form of, of infection right now um especially as people are far more aware of not touching their face and washing their hands and have you washed your hands recently everyone stop and go wash your hands right um and, and so uh where, where i think we are as a church, uh, as a Shalbina uh, church, is that uh, we're going to follow the guidance from our health department as our bishop has directed, and that leaves us with uh, two options going forward for worship. And I will do whichever one the, the board of the church would like to do, but we need to make sure that we're thinking about this as a church. So if you have an opinion about this, please tell me. Um, we can continue to have worship outside and have it uh, sitting six feet apart, sit in the parking lot, have singing, and um, we probably need to change the time because 10 a.m. on concrete is getting a mite warm. Or we can come into the sanctuary uh, under the following restrictions. We would not be able to sing. Anyone who could wear a mask would need to do so. And then we would use some box fans at the front doors and at the back door to create airflow so that uh, there would not be a buildup of that, that moisture. So if someone was inadvertently infected, that's always a risk, is that you're inadvertently affected, you're asymptomatic for two weeks and then you show up and infect others without realizing it um, that's why this this is spreading so much that I, I think we could do that we could have worship in the sanctuary under those restrictions gotta wear masks no singing we'd have the the doors open with, with fans so uh, I will do whichever one the church would prefer to do and uh, so I'll be chatting with the board. We'll, we'll gather input this week, Sunday, and then I'll chat with the board at the beginning of next month, and we'll see what, what, what we do. I'll, we'll make some announcements about where we go moving forward. As always, I continue to appreciate your uh, grace and patience and flexibility in these times. The reading for this day is the reading from Acts about the, the events of Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven, under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each of them heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own language we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. When we read about the events of Pentecost, we begin by reading that Jerusalem was full. 
They had people in Jerusalem from every nation under heaven. And if you just think about what that would have sounded like, like the crush of people filling the streets that they were not familiar with, the sounds of family members crying out, trying to keep together, trying to stay together, it would have been crazy. And all those people gathered together in an almost amazing and overwhelming amount of diversity. They were there for one purpose. They were there to celebrate the Jewish holy day of Shavuot, which was a celebration of the gift of the wheat harvest, as well as the gift of Torah, of what we now call the Old Testament. To be, uh, so the, the holiday was to celebrate that they were connected as God's chosen people, their lives made possible by the, God, the gifts God gives. And so the question of having that much diversity of people there, was it a gift or was it a problem? It would have depended who you asked. For the Roman officials who were in charge of the city, for the Roman governor who was trying to keep th everything uh, from keep er there from being any problems, this would have been a challenge because having people from all over the place, this would have been not something they'd wanted to have dealt with. But from the point of the view of the Jewish people, think about how that would have felt. To be surrounded by people of the same faith from all over the known world. To be bound together in worship and to be celebrating that God has given you these, these great gifts of teaching and of food that make your life possible. A gift indeed. Now there's an interesting way uh, that the Jewish people wanted to make sure, wanted to do something to make sure that everyone could celebrate this holiday and celebrate it well and celebrate it on the right date. You see, Jewish holidays are based on the lunar calendar, and the lunar calendar is based upon the, the moon. And so at the beginning of, of the new lunar month, at the new moon, uh, the new moon would be observed in Jerusalem at the temple, and then the messages would go out across uh, the, the world to all the Jewish folk that this was the beginning of the new month. And then from that date, they would determine the dates of their, their holy days, their holidays. But back then, it took a while for messengers to get very far. And, and so they had this practice just to make sure if someone got off, because the messenger had not gotten to them, they called the, these, uh, this practice, Yom Tov Sheni Shel Galuot, the second festival day of the diaspora. There was a second festival day added to the first so that everyone in the diaspora, everyone who was scattered out, everyone who was spread across the known world who was Jewish, could make sure that they would be able to celebrate this holiday and celebrate it with all the other Jewish people. So they, so they, they widened the target, so to speak. It's not just one day. It's a two-day festival now so that everyone from all over the world can be involved. I, I love that, that inclination, that, that in intention to make sure that everyone can be uh, able to gather and to celebrate this. And so in the midst of this celebration of God's gifts among people from all over the known world, in the midst of this practice that wanted to make sure everyone could be included, all the Jewish people could be included in this celebration, another gift is given. It is our faith that this Holy Spirit moves upon the people gathered and that this is the birth of the church, that the followers of Jesus gathered together then left the building. <coughs> That they then went out and they were talking to people who were gathered to worship. They were telling people, you know, we have, there's another gift given today. It is not just food. It is not just the teaching. It is also the Holy Spirit that comes to guide us into all truth, as Jesus has told us. And what is amazing to, to notice about this... It's not that when the Spirit moved, everyone could suddenly speak Hebrew. Because you have people from all over the known world, not everyone speaks Hebrew, they're gathered together. What happens is everyone hears the language that their native, their native language. Like, let, read one more time and, pay it, and, and make sure those catch this, right? Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all those who are speaking Galileans? How is it that we hear each of us in our own native 
language. Right? This is uh, this moment. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. They were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? Right. If, if we look at the list of all the places that uh, people had come from, like this is uh, everyone from modern Italy to Turkey to the Middle East to Egypt to North Africa. This is everywhere across the known world. It was everyone who could have possibly traveled to Jerusalem. And in this moment, they are all hearing the followers of Jesus speak to them in their native language. And I love what this shows us, is that when the Spirit moves, it does not reduce diversity. It does not work in spite of diversity, making sure that everyone understood Hebrew. When the Spirit moved, it was in the midst of and through that diversity so that everyone could hear their native language. It is this understanding that has formed the, the work of the church over the centuries that we as a church, we will go to you and we will learn to speak your language so that when we give you the gift of the gospel, it is exactly that. It is a gift. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to learn to be like me. We will get, bring to you and teach you in your language so that you can receive this gift truly as a gift. And having received this gift... You do not have to practice church the same way that we do, that I do, right? We trust that when you follow Jesus towards the Father, that the Spirit will guide you and make sense, of, and you will be able to worship God in the way that makes sense for that moment, that time, that people, that context. This understanding that the Spirit leads us out to others and that others are not going to be the same is one of the major reasons, if we think about it, that we have so many types of churches. The fact that the Spirit does not reduce diversity, but works through diversity. Right? This is part of, uh, why, if you wonder why there are so many churches, it's because the Spirit moves and, and moves people, and people are different, and that's okay. We are all, each of us, following Jesus, empowered by the Spirit. Right? So I want to talk a bit about how do we understand the fact that there are so many type of churches, and understand that in the context of, of believing that the Spirit is moving as the Spirit began to move in Pentecost, uh, bringing about the, the birth of the church, so that now we have this wonderful uh, situation. We have so many types of churches today. And so I want to ask three questions about how, how we think through the, 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 diver the diversity of churches. First, let's ask, is the number of types of churches a problem or is it a gift? Right, that's, the, that's the first question. To have this many types of churches, if it is a problem, well, it's a problem if we're trying to compete for the same people. It is a, to get the same pe the, if we're all looking at the same people to try to get to our church, right? It is a problem if our approach is that we are right, and if you don't agree with us fully, that you are damned. It is a problem that there is a diversity of churches if, in how we treat other churches, people see a sign of the brokenness of the world and thus deny that how could we be Christian if Christians themselves cannot love each other. Yet, if we see other churches as fellow laborers in the field, sent out so that all of us might reach ever more people, not just the ones who are already in the pews, then the other churches are a gift. If we see other churches as fellow musicians to play with, such that in playing together, the music becomes richer and deeper and more beautiful, then the other churches are a gift. If we can work with other churches such that we are a visible sign of how people who follow Jesus Christ can love each other, even when we may not be the same, then the other churches are an opportunity and they are a gift and they are to be cherished. I hope that we can learn and practice seeing other churches as a gift. A second, church, a second question then is, are churches forever or are churches just for now, for this time? Put differently, we might ask, will there be churches in the kingdom of God that is to come? It is my understanding that the kingdom is the goal and the, ve and the, the vehicle for the journey is the church. Once you get to the goal, you don't stay in the vehicle. 
Right? The churches are transitory. They are for now, but they are not going to be around forever. In the end, Christians are, going to, are heading towards the kingdom of God, and being in Christ is what matters. It is not what flavor of Christian the person was during the life that got them there. Furthermore, I doubt that we are ever going to see a decrease in the number of types of churches between now and the kingdom that is to come, right? It, it always strikes me, this is the classic example of how this works out, right? That if you try to reduce diversity, that, that can backfire itself. There's uh, two guys, uh, Barton Stone and Thomas Campbell, in the early part of the 19th century, they, they decided that they wanted to get rid of all the denominations, these two pastors. Get rid of all the denominations. Let's have no creed but Christ, no book but the Bible. Let's just preach and gather people together, and, and everyone can just leave all the, the Methodists, the Presbyterian, the Catholic, the Baptist. We leave all that behind. Let's just be Christian. Let's just be Christian. Right? And uh, so they were restoring the New Testament church. The irony was that in the end, uh, these two guys, Barton Stone and Thomas Campbell, in their attempt to get rid of all the denominations, what they ended up doing was actually creating two more. The disciples of Christ and the churches of Christ are what, what comes out of the Barton Stone, uh, Thomas Campbell-led movement. They wanted to get rid of denominations, they added two more. Yeah. <laughs> So a third question, right? one that is hopefully rather obvious to answer, is the Holy Spirit present in and empowering other churches? Yes. Yes, the Holy Spirit is moving. The Holy the Spirit of God is moving over the face of the earth and, and is known in worship of the God who is known as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that is not only in the churches around the world, but is also in those churches guiding us to go out, to leave, to get out of here, to leave the building, to go out and to speak the language of other people, to, to go out and to find and to be a blessing. All right. And to be clear, there is a lot out there to cover. In Shalbina, there are 3,607 people in an 8.8 mile radius around the church. 8.8 .8 miles gets up us north to Shelbyville, but doesn't include um, uh, Clarence nor, nor Honeywell. So that's kind of what the people that we look at as people that we could reach out to. Right? And um, if you look at how many people are in worship on a Sunday, it's five, six, seven hundred. But that's not many compared to the 3,607 that are out there. There are plenty of people for us to go and to be good news to. It's the same type of math for Honeywell on a slightly smaller scale. There's 670 people in the area around Honeywell, uh, including Lake Nin and down to Clapper, but not going almost to Monroe City. But um, I'm not sure how many people are in church out of those 670 every Sunday, but it's not all of them. Right? The Holy Spirit is what is empowering people in the churches to lead and to go out and to see people and to see them as people. We can learn to speak their language and we can learn to be a gift to them. And to do this, we need partners. We need churches to work with so that we can go out and learn how to do what happened on the first day of Pentecost. To go out and to speak to everyone we can, trusting that difference and diversity is not a problem, but a gift. Diversity in our churches, diversity of the churches, diversity of the people out there that we are sent to learn to speak with in their own native language. This is not a problem. This is a gift. Now, it is admittedly odd to ponder this Pentecost at this particular moment in time. All of the plans of, of both the Shelbina and Honeywell churches for what we were planning to do to get out into the community I have all been put on hold for right now. The Shelbina fish fry and getting into the schools to, to read to children and be, be good help uh, them with literacy. Right? That, that's all been put on hold. The, the Honeywell shindig has been, been put on hold. But that does not mean that we have no way to be involved out there right now. Uh, there are ways that each of us can contact, reach out. We all have neighbors. We're all in contact with someone, even if it's not in the usual way that we're used to living, right? Nor does it mean that 
There will not be interesting, new, different ways to be involved out of our doors once we can move around more freely. Uh, there will be a time when we return to normal, yet that normal is not going to be the same normal that we had before March. Things are going to shift. I, I don't know what that is going to look like, but I have faith and trust that God's Spirit will move and that we will be able to continue to go out and to share God's good news in the native language of the people that we go to serve. I don't know what it'll look like, but I look forward to praying towards doing that and praying towards doing that with you. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for sending us your spirit, a spirit that leads us into all truth, a spirit that empowers our worship and makes it possible for us to be bold and following. We pray that, guided by your spirit, we may continue to grow into a people of compassion, concern, and courage that are willing to go to people no matter what language they speak. We pray that your spirit might continue to move in the midst of these challenging times. When there are so many who are hurt after the senseless death of another black man, when 40 million people are out, are out of work just in the last 10 weeks, when 100,000 people have died in America due to this virus, we, we must admit that we struggle. We struggle and we pray. We pray that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, because this, Lord, this is not your will, and we need your will to be done. We give thanks this day for our fellow churches, praying for their wisdom and safety in this time. We pray that we might be able to celebrate the diversity of all those who follow you and join with them in being your good news to this broken world. Amen. I hope you have a restful and peaceful weekend and look forward to seeing you in person as soon as we can.